Here's why the impact of the mobile revolution is still unfolded. Hey everybody, Eric Enga here. I'm the principal for the Digital Marketing Solutions Business Unit at Proficient. And I'm gonna to talk to you today about the data from our newest study of mobile versus desktop usage. We actually first started tracking this in 2016. And the interesting thing is um, this many years later, the growth of mobile's dominance is just continuing to grow. It's particularly interesting to me to this year because in the face of the pandemic, where more people were at home, uh, I had considered the possibility that maybe people would be spending more time with their desktop uh, devices, if they have them, of course, uh, just because they were at home anyway and they weren't out and about. Uh, but what we in fact saw was continued growth, but I'll get into that in a moment. First of all, I just wanna let you know, this year we used the Google benchmarking tool for our analysis, uh, allowed us to get some really good detailed and comprehensive numbers. But let's uh, actually take a look. First of all, as I'm showing you now, in 2020, uh, and in the US, 61% of visits to websites came from mobile devices. This is up from 57% in 2019. And globally, 2020 saw 68% of visits starting from mobile devices, with 2019 coming in at the 63%. So as has been the case since the beginning of the study, uh, the uh, volume or the percentage of mobile in, outside the U.S. is greater than it is in, inside the U.S. just because there are countries where mobile uh, devices are the primary or even the only way people uh, access uh, the web. But, you know, it's interesting. You look at those levels of growth, you know, 57 to 61 and 63 to 68. That's still a pretty strong trajectory upwards. And that was a bit of a surprise to me given the past year. But nonetheless, desktop still leads in total aggregate time spent on site by users. And the reason for this is that desktop sessions tend to be a bit longer. Uh, so in the US, for example, 53% of all time on site uh, was on a desktop device versus 43% for mobile uh, with the balance going to tablet devices. Um, and as you might expect, therefore, Mobile also lags by having the highest bounce rate and lowest page use per visitor, and that's not a big surprise. Um, and these numbers fit our really our intuitive expectations for behavior because you know mobile devices, smaller keyboard, you know smaller screen. Uh, so if I really have some more in-depth stuff I want to do, then I'm more likely to use a larger screen and keyboard if I have it. Um, but it's also fair to say, thinking about all this that the industry is still maturing with respect to its skill and things like mobile design and mobile user experience and mobile customer experience. Um, and to that end, I wanna talk a little bit about what this all means. So Google is now uh, very close to the final adoption of mobile first um, uh, indexing. Most sites are already there, but whoever isn't there by end of March 21, uh, 2021, Google's flipping the switch. And then in May, we have the upcoming Core Web Vitals uh, algorithm release. And as I think about what this means is, to me, what it means is that various aspects of consumer experience or customer experience and user experience and design are becoming increasingly uh, critical to your overall digital marketing uh, program and investments. Some of this influences SEO directly, some influences SEO indirectly, uh, and they all impact uh, conversion rate. And because of that, all of it, all these things influences your ROI on your SEO investments, or for that matter, any of your digital marketing uh, investments where uh, sending people to the website is a primary target. Um, and I still see too many companies that begin with their web design projects with a desktop first mentality. Users in Google both have left that far behind. It's essential that you do the same. And that means there are several areas that you need to think about from the point of view of what you're doing with your mobile experience. Uh, obviously, ease of navigation, um, the power and accuracy of your site search, um, and the comprehensiveness of your content. And it's interesting. So 
when you think about comprehensive content, what I want to get you to think about here is you need to have all the same content that you envision having on your desktop site. Uh, and that might seem more complicated to put into a, a mobile design format, but it just means you need to invest the energy to uh, make sure that your navigation and your overall design still gives you that clean, simple feel and look where people feel comfortable and they can find what they want quickly, but they can still get to comprehensive levels of content. So it's a lot for us to learn there as an industry, I think, still. Site speed is huge too. Um, I can't tell you, every pr prospect site that I look at, uh, working here at Proficient, it, it's like it's like a given. I'm going to go check their site speed and it's going to be kind of abysmal. Uh, it's so common. Um, and obviously I, I see exceptions, but um, it, it's an area that's so underinvested in, probably partly because it's uh, hard to do and not people don't fully understand how to attack it. And the other thing that you need to think about is just avoiding things that block users from getting what they want. Interstitials is an example of that. But ultimately, it's a new day, right? I mean, this has been coming for a long time and some people were very aggressive and get out in front of it and they're, they're reaping the rewards of that. But if you haven't, it really needs you to bring forth a new focus um, and realize that it does create new opportunities to get in front of those who are still lagging behind and being slow to react. Take advantage of this opportunity while you still can. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Here's Why. And if you did, please click on the subscribe button below so you won't miss any future episodes.